I'd like to call the eighth meeting of the 2013-2014 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Individual commitment to a group effort, that is what makes a team work, a company work, a society work, a civilization work. Thank you. Would the clerk please call the roll? Check. Alderman Thiel is excused. Alderman Matichek is not excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is the approval of the minutes. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move we approve the minutes of the previous council meeting. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. The minutes are before us. Are there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen ayes. Next is uh, resignations, city attorney. Uh, this is on a letter to the <clears throat> mayor from the school district dated July 9th, advising that uh, Chad stauber Soik was resigning from the, uh, as the school district's representative on the library board. Uh, and that was effective immediately, apparently. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept the, resi uh, excuse me, expect, accept the resignation and put it on file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The resignation is before us. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, uh, please press your I button or oppose your nay button, and the clerk will call the roll. 14 ayes. Next, we'll move on to council appointments. City Attorney. Christine Camp to be appointed as the Sheboygan Area School District representative to the library board uh, to fill the unexpired term. The term expires on April 30, 2016. And that will lie over. Next item is a proclamation uh, in honor of the uh, 30th anniversary of the Elwood H. May Park Association. I'll just read the proclamation. Whereas the Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association of Sheboygan County Incorporated and the Environmental Park Trust of Sheboygan County were established in 1983, and whereas the Park Association consists of more than 500 member families that provide countless hours of volunteer service and trust and the trust provides for financial support of the park and its facilities and programs. And whereas Maywood has evolved in the past 30 years from having trails developed, a suspension bridge constructed, ponds created for wildlife, wetlands restored, prairies planted, and the William A. Heisen Pavilion built and dedicated, and whereas Maywood continues to grow and thrive, adding an Arboretum Bridge and the beautiful Hummingbird Park garden to the grounds and whereas Sheboygan citizens by the thousands enjoy the park on an annual basis. I therefore, Mike Vanderstein, by virtue of the authority vested in me as mayor of the city of Sheboygan, to hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations to the Elwood H. May Environmental Park Association on the celebration of their 30th anniversary on Sunday, July 14th of 2013. And I encourage our council as well as all of our citizens to enjoy the day as well as our beautiful Maywood Park. And this was presented to them at their celebration on Sunday. Thank you. Next, we'll move on to the public forum. Uh, yes, we have two this evening. Uh, first on the list would be Rufino Martinez. Rufino, are you here? 
Would you like to come up to the front, please? <clears throat> Mr. Martinez, can you give me your home address? Yeah, my home address is 914 North 17th Street. My name is Rufino Martinez. As you're aware of, I was here last two weeks ago regarding to my issues that I was having on 914, uh, 1450 South A Street called Rehab Bar and Grill. Um, I came out here last week uh, regarding because I uh, found out that the community uh, found it. I found out after this meeting that I that came here to talk to you guys. Later that evening, I talked to Lovacek, uh, Alderman Lovacek, Malacek, <clears throat> talked to me outside regarding to that they had no idea that the issue, that they had no idea that the committee had any idea that they were given 60 days or 30 days or 10 days to us that we're the ones that approach the committee or the attorney, which was not true. So that kind of concerned me because all this time I was thought that the attorney, city attorney, the liquor attorney was, was involved with my attorney talking that the committee was making all the decisions and it was not because the committee was not aware of what the, what the, uh, the penalty they gave me to shut down for 30 days. So here I am, that's why I'm trying to find out the answers because I'm, I'm losing money right now for 30 days, I'm shut down. And I was here this past uh, Monday, Wednesday, last week, Wednesday, talked to the mayor of all the issues, and I'm still concerned uh, if you guys, uh, any of you can make the meeting next week, Tuesday with a liquor license, because the, like the Allman's mentioned, that I didn't bring out a lot of issues. I only have five minutes. I didn't have a lot of minutes to talk about all the issues. I haven't had an issue in my business for over a year of August going into a year. This coming August would be a year. Uh, there was an uh, incident happened in August and a, a, a call disturbance, a, a loud noise, and that was brought up and they brought me in. Why well, we got a letter and all of a sudden I'm out of my bar is closed. So I'm, I'm gathering a lot of things, a lot of questions and answers. I'm still confused that I want to bring it up to the committee, liquor and license, to find out that the 30 days is out of range. And um, I'm just kind of, I have, I know I have five minutes, but if you allow me to pass these around, there are too, not too many. I'm hoping they can pass them around back and forth. And some of you are belong to the liquor license. I belong to the Tavern Safety Coalition as a TSC coalition. Um, I'm one of the board members. Um, anything happens in Sheboygan, any, any taverns, uh, inside or outside, they bring it to our attention and we go through these issues. Um, I, haven't had, I haven't had any issues just about a, over a year now. And because of the issue that happened just about a year ago, and a calls of noise brought, brought a lot of things in the past into this, and they also not close. You know, and this is what I'm trying to find out. There's so many things confusing here because a lot of these taverns go through the same thing, <coughs> not just us. And I don't see any of them getting shut down in 30 days. And we, we meet with them once a month, <coughs> you know, and they go through all this. And if you can find my place that I've been, uh, somebody had been arrested of fights or anything like that outside my bar for the last over a year, please somebody tell me where this happened because it hadn't happened. And here I am shut down. So I don't know how much minutes do I got? Um, you are right at four minutes right now. So you got another minute. Okay. <clears throat> um, another issue is that I want to say that uh, Scott Lovinchuk, La Lovowski, uh, on Facebook put out because we were closing down last week this past Monday well I said I think it was Monday last week Monday we were closed put out there saying that oh somebody happened in our neighborhood and he got on Facebook and said oh another incident at rehab I mean a lot of people read that a lot of people read that, and now it's an incident that happened to me that they throw that name out there, and it's been like that ever since I opened. I don't feel this right. 
Another question I would like to ask the attorney, the city attorney here. Um, we we when, don't accept any discussion. You just get to make your okay, statement. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll bring it up in the, the Tuesdays next week, the li liquor license. Because I feel that there was a lot of issues that are still open, and it hurt me day by day when I'm close. I just want to let you guys know that. Thank you. Thank you. Know. Thank you for those comments. All right. And second on our list is Milt Storm. Milt, if you could come up to the front, please. <clears throat> Milt, can I have your home address? Yes, it's 1736 Marvin Court. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> I had to change my issue on agenda when I read the funny page, the editorial page of the Sheboygan Press this morning because I was really taken over the coals. It's a uh, David Henning who writes uh, a column on what's on his mind. David Henning happens to be a debate coach out at Lincoln College. He also studied debate at South High when he was a student. And now he also helps and assists with the debate teams over at North High and, uh, and uh, South High. So let me read his uh, funny page thing here first before I analyze what it is. He says, shocking intolerance. Milt Storm's letter to the editor about gay marriage is shocking in its ignorance and intolerance. Storm dismisses those in favor of gay marriage as holding irrational beliefs without explaining their irrationality. Sane people are those who believe, in, believe as Milt does. Like a fifth grader, he uses, no, I can't see this, but I need new glasses. Like a fifth grader, he uses the dictionary, which one? I use five of them. And defines sex as the difference between male and female species. No, the press made an error. It's, fee, uh, it's male and female of a species, Okay. Storm claims that churches can make a more truthful and righteous decision than courts. Shocking. Which church? Milt's church? No, I go to five different, maybe eight churches. Why are you not a Muslim or a Wiccan or a church? Storm wants his notion of Christian churches making the laws of our land. Well, he ought to go to talk to the Muslim preacher over there they got at Lakeland. Maybe he get some information from that guy. You say, I know all these people, and they're going to get to know me. That's a theocracy. A theocracy is a theorem. A state run by religious leaders like the Taliban, Iran, and Saudi Arabia, this intolerant, anti-American idea runs contrary to the Constitution and 230 years of American history. It's nothing more than a thinly veiled threat to stomp out anyone who disagrees. Let me teach Mr. Henning a little thing about the Wisconsin Constitution. This is section 18 of the Wisconsin Statute, as amended November 1892. The right of every person to worship Almighty God, and that's to capitalize, according to the dictates of his conscience, shall never be infringed. Nor shall any person be compelled to attend, erect, or support any place of worship or maintain any ministry without consent. Nor shall any control of or the interference with the rights of conscience be permitted. Now, for the Sheboygan Press to read something like that, that could bring a lawsuit. What the press should have done is put in a disclaimer that the thing that he wrote is not necessarily the same opinion as the, opi uh, as the press. <clears throat> when I uh, homeschooled myself in the Bible and electronic energy, or I went to the DeVry Institute of Electronics. I homeschooled myself while I was also reading the Bible and working the farm to send my identical twin brother to the University 
Lawrence University, and then finally he got a master's degree in the, the University of Michigan and computer technology. This president was a very religious man. And after all of my lessons, he always had a note from his notebook. And I like to read this one. It's called Kindness. It's one of the last ones that I read or that I received. If I were utterly selfish and if there were no other merit in kindness, I would try to cultivate the habit of doing kindly deeds for others. And I might reap the benefits I know be my certain reward. Kindness is regarded as a cardinal virtue by the followers of all religions, none of whom can claim its discovery. But if all religion were destroyed, <coughs> kindness would still be practiced. It would be considered good business. The kindly man or woman is the personification of the golden rule. He or she speaks or acts with full consideration of how a friend, a neighbor, a business, or a community might, by word or deed, be injured or benefit. Excuse me, Milt. Your five minutes are up. Oh, can I have one more? Please wrap up. This is, no, this is no brief of kindness as one of the keys to eternal life. It is a statement of fact some, concerning the positive return in material gain from an investment that first pays one more than adequately in spiritual satisfaction. Thank you, Milt. Thank you for those thoughts, Milt. <clears throat> and that would be it for public forum. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to the 2014 budget summary. Could you get somebody to turn down those fans a little bit, Mayor? Really Someone, please turn the fans down. Room. For us old guys. Huh? Not just you guys. What? Chad? Next, we'll move on to the 2014 budget summary presented by our city administrator, Jim Amodio. Much better, thank better. you. Before you, you have an executive summary of the 2014 budget. It was updated uh, uh, earlier today, and it, I'm sorry? Can you pull okay. the mic close to you? Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, it was updated earlier this morning. Uh, a little bit of background. Uh, residential and commercial assessed values for 14 have remained pretty consistent with 13, and they've only dropped about 1% since 2008 values. Equalized values from 14 dropped 4.4% over 13. <laughs> and have declined roughly 14 percent since 2008. As you know, we've talked earlier about this, a full city evaluation will be done, a re-evaluation will be done during 2014 to bring the assessed values in line with uh, market values. City's tax levy has remained relatively constant for the past seven years, and in 2013, the city's rate was reduced by 13 cents per thousand due to tax uh, increment district three closure. In 2013, the tax levy was used to fund the general fund at 73%, the library at 11.1%, debt service at 13.5%, and transit at 2.4%. Entering 2013, the city improved its reserves in the health fund, workers' comp fund, and general fund. Motor vehicle fund reduced slightly in 2012. Staffing levels for the city over the past eight years have been reduced by 14.1%, or 51 full-time equivalents. There was a net one-person reduction uh, between the, the 13 and 14 budget. <clears throat> the budget assumptions that we used in 2014 were escalation of 2.5% of payroll, WRF contribution changes approved by the state, and dental a premium increase of 4%. Stepping off from the 13 budget, escalation amounted to 540,000 with benefits. <laughs> 
<coughs> which included delays in hiring in the 2013 budget for new hires during the year. And that impacted 2014 by roughly 149,000. We have two additional elections in 2014 that would increase the uh, budget by $110,000. The increase in dental premium was $61,000, and we actually lost $120,000 in CDBG funding. This created an increase in the expense budget of about $1,034,000. On the revenue side, there was a reduction of $225,000 for the, the end of the three-year police grant which the city received. Uh, the, the combined deficit before we started the budge, budget process was $1,259,000. During May and June, there were two rounds of budgets, and <clears throat> when we went through these budgets, we reduced the expense side from a million oh thirty six to four hundred and fifty four thousand dollars in revenue from a two hundred and twenty five thousand dollar decrease to actually a hundred and sixty one thousand dollar increase over thirteen levels. The net shortfall as we stand today in the budgets that you received is currently two hundred and ninety three thousand dollars. <throat> the following are the increases fourteen over thirteen. General government uh, there was no increase twenty seven thousand. City development was up sixteen point eight percent and that's primarily driven by the loss of the uh, uh, CDBG funding, which funded parts of our employees. Police was up two-tenths of a percent. Fire was up 1.3. Public Works, 1.6. And the overall expense budget was up 1.3 percent. Overall employees' cost in the general fund is 79 percent of the total cost. General government is at 70 percent. City development at 83. Police at 90 percent. Fire at 94 and public works at 59%. I won't go through all the detail, but you can see as outlined here, wages increased by 645,000 due to escalation, delay in hiring personnel in 13, uh, part-time position elimination, and clothing allowance increase, and this is what we negotiated with the police department. So you'll see a clothing allowance increase because we put it in their base salary. You'll also see the offset to that and the fringe benefits. Fringe benefits went up by $105,000 uh, with FICA, health and retiree, and clothing allowance. Non-payroll costs decreased 13 over, or 14 over 13 by $86,000. <clears> and revenue increased by $161,000 in 14 over 13, primarily driven by increase in municipal court and ambulance services of $159,000 and a levy transfer of $71,000. The 14 budget assumes the same level of service provided in 13. The challenge is 79% of general fund is employee cost. 12.5% is public works non-payroll costs for infrastructure and roads. And the other 8.5% is non-payroll related costs to support all other departments in the city. If the council so chooses to bring the levy rate back to 2012 levels, uh, they can increase the levy by 13 cents a thousand and there would be no need for any Further cost reductions in 2014 is a recommendation. For 2014, the cost of city services are as follows. Public protection and safety is 20.1 million or 57% of our budget. Public works is 10.6 million or 30% of our budget. General government is 3.9 million or 11% of our government. And city development is 867,000 or 2%. Uh, the questions should be held uh, for the committee meetings. Uh, there are two opportunities for committee meetings, uh, the week of 722 and the week of 812, so that the committees can set uh, their departments for their full budget review. Those are due back to council on 819. They're then referred from council to the finance committee on 826. Uh, it is then referred back with the finance committee's recommendations to the council on 93. We publicate the budget on 10-1. We have the hearings on 10-20. And if there are no issues, we adopt the budget on 11-4. That's the current schedule that we have. So again, there are two opportunities for uh, committee head or committee chairs to uh, hold budget meetings, which is the week of 7-22 or 8-12. Thank you very much. Jim, thank you very much for that report. Next, we'll go on to the mayor's comments. First of all, I'd like to ask Garrett Erickson to step up to the podium. Uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity 
to introduce Garrett to not only the aldermen, and, but also the community that's watching on TV. On June 10th, Garrett Erickson became the sixth library director in the history of our Mead Public Library in its 116 year existence. Garrett came to us from the Wausau area where he spent eight years as the operations manor, manager at Marathon County Public Library. Previously, he had done IT work at the Department of Public Instruction and in private industry. Garrett was interested in the role of the library director at Mead because it offered a leadership position in a similar sized library to the Marathon County Public Library. He also liked the idea of moving to Sheboygan because his wife grew up in the Plymouth area and still have many friends and family in this area. He's married to Terry Schneider Erickson and they have two children, Kale and Cora. Garrett, would you like to uh, add anything to that? Well, I'd just like to say uh, my family and I is very, are very excited to be in the Sheboygan area, as uh, stated, and I just look forward to working with all of you in the future. Welcome to the city team. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Next, I'd just like to announce that uh, the 30th annual Night Out is going to be held Tuesday, August 6th at Fountain Park and participants can plan on uh, a short walk around the neighborhood and that will start at 6 p.m. I also like to just uh, mention that Dale Dorr, our wastewater treatment plant superintendent, had uh, resigned. Uh, we had hoped to have him here, but he's already off to his new job, so I just wanted to make notice of that. He, um, he got a really good uh, position. Disney World is putting a brand new wastewater treatment plant in and they hired Dale to run that for him. So he'll be able to hire his own crew and everything and have a brand new plant to work with. Dale brought a, a new vision of sustainability to the operation of our wastewater treatment plant and uh, we really appreciate all the work that he and his team did there. Sharon uh, Thyssen is, gonna be, is named the interim uh, superintendent and uh, we'll start out in that role and then we'll look to fill the position later. We recently uh, heard from uh, Benjamin Moore's Paint That Matters campaign. Uh, remember, we sent some emails out to all of you and tried to get it out on Facebook and other social media. Well, Sheboygan was selected as one of the 20 communities that's going to get a makeover. And um, I'd like to thank all the residents and, uh, and the friends of Sheboygan who went to their website and clicked and voted for Sheboygan to, uh, to win this. Now, they will be... Uh, completing all the projects over the next year with the help of local Benjamin Moore retailers and painting contractors. So they'll be sending some designers in to work with all the individual uh, buildings and owners to put a plan together. And then next year we should see uh, some uh, uh, new paint going up. And uh, speaking of, of painting, um, Sheboygan's been working on a, uh, an art project with the, the Wooster Art Project with the John Michael Kohler Art Center. And uh, there's a nice article in the paper about the Deland Park uh, Beach Bathhouse, which was uh, painted last week. And there's going to be some work done on Kentucky Avenue and 14th Street Bridge this week. There will also be some work done on um, 10th and Erie location. And um, we're going to see some work under the A Street Bridge, as well as um, a barn across from Maywood. So those are some of the other projects that will be a part of that Wooster art project. Next, we'll move on to item number two, a hearing. A hearing regarding the proposed special assessments for water lateral <coughs> replacements in Barrett Street from Lake Court to Lighthouse Court. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to close the hearing. Second. It's moved and seconded to close the hearing. Any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll. Ty. Sorry. I didn't mean to say it that loud. <laughs> Sorry. Um, 14 eyes. Thank you. Next, we'll go on with the consent agenda, which will include items 3.1 from 3.21, uh, except for item 3.2, which will be referred to the Public Protection and Safety Committee. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and file all, all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and put all resolutions and ordinance upon their passage. Second. It's been moved and seconded on the consent agenda. Alderman Boren. 
Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. I would like to pull forward document number 317, please. And I would ask that document be held and referred to the Committee of the Whole. Is there a second to that second. motion? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that RC by the Finance Committee authorizing and extending the contract with EMS Medical Billing Associates, LLC of Milwaukee, for providing emergency medical services, billing, and collection services for an additional two year period uh, by letter of agreement to, to that effect. So, you want to hold this? I want to hold the document and refer it to the Committee of the Whole. Okay, does everyone understand the motion? Referred. Any other discussion? Alderman Donahue? I, I, still, I think I still have the floor, Mayor. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I just want to mention that when Mr. Kiefer was up here from EMS Billing, I think it was in February, to talk to the Finance Committee, I extended an invitation to him to uh, speak with the council as a group at a committee of the whole meeting, and he was agreeable to that. I haven't been able to put together a date, but I'd like to do this sometime either the last week of July or sometime in August. I'll work with Chief Herman on firming up a date with Mr. Kiefer and work on work with Chief Herman and Mr. Amodio on an agenda for that committee of the whole meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Hammond? Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I'd just like an explanation of why we're moving this from finance, who approved it, to the committee of the whole. Um, it's highly unusual that we would do something like that. So I guess I'd just like an explanation of why we're doing that. Thank you. Alderman Bourne, would you care to respond? Well, for the reason I just stated, uh, I've been trying to put together a meeting with Mr. Kiefer since June and haven't been able to uh, firm up any dates with him. And being that we are uh, considering renewing the comment, uh, contract for EMS billing, I think it would be a good opportunity for the council, the entire council, uh, to hear from Mr. Kiefer on that subject. And uh, being that we have a lot of new older persons the last couple of years, I think it's an opportunity for some of the new older persons to also hear about the financials of the, uh, of the ambulance service. So that's the reason for information transparency. And I understand in talking to one of the finance committee members uh, from last week's meeting that the contract itself was not reviewed with the members of the finance committee. And uh, I, if this was coming to a vote tonight, I wouldn't vote for it because generally when we're approving any contract or a renewal of contract, we have a copy of that contract to review before our council meeting, and uh, I don't believe the finance committee members had a copy of the contract, and neither did the rest of the aldermen. So I guess in the, in the interest of Mr. Kiefer being willing to come up here and make a presentation, I thought it would be a good idea to take him up on that offer. Thank you. Alderman Donahue, did you have a comment? Um, Mayor, I'm asking to pull another matter from the okay. consent agenda. Thank you. Any other discussion on the motion to hold this item? See, go ahead, Mr. Just Mr. as a procedural matter, Alderman Bourne, to hold is to leave it in the council, not to act on it tonight. Yeah. That's different than referring. If you want to refer it to the committee, then you don't want to hold it. You just want to have it referred to the committee. That's the procedure. That's fine. Then I'll amend my motion to refer it to the committee of the whole. Second. Okay, um, the original motion has been retracted and a substitute motion has been put on the floor to refer this to the committee of the whole, is that correct? Yes. Okay, any discussion on that motion as amended? Seeing none, all those, uh, well, do the clerk please call the roll on that amendment. Eight eyes, six no's. That motion passes. So then we're going back to the original motion on the consent agenda to refer all items 3.1 through 3.21, except uh, 3.2, which is being referred to public protection and safety. Alderman Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would ask that uh, 3.5 be um, removed for separate discussion. Okay, please go ahead on 3.5. And then I would uh, uh, move that uh, the uh, proposed ordinance uh, be uh, put on its passage. Any discussion on that? Is there, first of all, is there a second? I didn't hear it. We don't need to hear that. Oh, pardon me? 
Alderman Donahue, did you need to discuss it just to pull it to vote um, separate? Actually, I need to, um, uh, there's an amendment that needs to be made tonight to the ordinance um, as we're putting it forward. Okay, so Alderman Donahue made a motion on passage. Is there a second to that second. motion? Second. It's been seconded. Okay, under discussion of the motion. And then, uh, uh, Mayor, I would move that the um, ordinance be amended uh, so that the first line of Section 1 of the General Ordinance to insert after, quote, contained herein, unquote, and before, quote, 8th Street Alehouse Holdings, LLC, unquote, the following language, quote, and the provisions of Section 110-501 through 110-503 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code, end quote. Second. Has it been seconded on the amendment? Could you ex please explain the intent of the amendment? Yes, I can. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, this particular ordinance relates to an encroachment for the A Street Ale House to essentially add a sidewalk cafe along the north side of the building. Um, Attorney McLean has explained uh, to, uh, to me that um, what we are doing is inserting uh, language relating to the city's regulations of sidewalk cafes to include that in the ordinance because it is a bit more than just an encroachment. Um, it is a encroachment for the purpose of maintaining an outside uh, dining area. So this is just to include that language uh, and, uh, and, and make it a bit more clear as to what the A Street Ale House will be required to uh, comply with. Very good, thank you for that explanation. Is there any further discussion? Chad Pelichek. Just as a point of clarity, this encroachment is for the encroachment on the east side of the building, the A Street side. They already have an encroachment for the north side of the building. So just so everybody knows that it's the encroachment to have the sidewalk cafe on the uh, side facing the Paradigm Coffee Shop or St. Clair Avenue has already been approved. This is for the A Street side. Thank you for that clarification, Chad. Is there any other discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor? Oh, uh, aye. Just, just a second. We'll call the roll in a second. I'm just going to put it to a put. You can give me the wording later. Okay. This is to vote to change the wording. Fourteen eyes. The motion passes. Uh, next, we have uh, a motion that was on the floor is now amended. Uh, any further discussion on the motion as amended? Seeing none, uh, would you please call the roll on the motion? And this would be to pass the RO and the ordinance as amended. Yeah. 14 ayes. Thank you. Then back to the consent agenda. Um, the motion is on the floor to re approve those other items as noted, except for item 3.2, which is being referred to public protection and safety. Alderman Lassard. Thank you, Mayor. I request a division of the question to act separately on the temporary Class B license for 2909 Gateway Neighborhood Association and to approve the others. I would like to have the Gateway Neighborhood Association be referred to lawn licensing. That's item... What's Three, the item number? 3.1. 3.1. I'm okay. sorry. Okay, item 3.1, and you wanted to separate which item? I'd like to request a division of the question to act separately on temporary Class B license to 2909 Gateway, the Neighborhood Association, which I would like to have referred to law and licensing and approve the others. Okay, okay if there's no, no... We first need to just vote on dividing the question. Okay, is that your motion? Yes. Is there a second to dividing the question? We have a second. And uh, we call the roll for division. Daryl. Daryl. Fourteen. Under division, uh, we're going to be asking to refer that item to law and licensing, correct? Correct. Okay. Is there a second to the motion to uh, refer that to law and licensing? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on that item? 
Alderman Donahue. Um, I assume this is for the Gateway Neighborhood Association's uh, long block party on Michigan Avenue. Um, and while I uh, do not believe that there were issues last year, um, I, I would not be necessarily opposed to this, uh, but for the fact that I, I'm concerned about timing. Um, I know that this event is planned for sometime this summer, and uh, so I would just, in order for me to vote in favor of this, I would need to make sure that uh, this really quite wonderful event can actually take place within the timeline. Alderman Lassard, can you give us an idea of the yes. timing on this? Um, I'm assuming that, um, that it's going to be on August 24th, and checking with the clerk, there will be plenty of time for it to get to our lawn licensing and then get back to committee well before the event takes place. We just need some clarity on a couple of issues. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Okay, the motion is to um, send that one item to the lawn licensing committee. All those in favor, please press your I button or oppose your nay button and the clerk will call the roll. 13 ayes, one no. Okay, then we're back to the consent agenda. And we have a motion to approve all the remaining items except for item 3.2, which will be referred to PPNS. Is there any other discussion? All right, clerk, please call the roll on the consent. Fourteen eyes. Um, items four point one and four point two will be referred both to public protection and safety. Uh, five point one, an RO by the Planning Commission amending the zoning map will lie over. Items five point two through five point six will be referred to various committees. Item 6.1, a resolution by Alderman Hammond transferring appropriations in the 2013 budget will lie over. Item 6.2 and 6.3 will be referred to both to the Public Works Committee. Under reports of committees, item 7.1 is an RC by law and licensing recommending denying a beverage operator's li license 9984 based on her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions in her application, her record of violations and re that are related to the licensed activity, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. I second. It's moved and seconded. That's uh, before us under discussion. Is Jessica Steinke here this evening? She's not here. Um, we invited her to our meeting um, on two different occasions, and she did not show either time, so we denied the license. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? 14 ayes. Next is item 7.2, NRC by law and licensing recommending denying a taxi cab business uh, nine, or excuse me, 2997, the best taxi based on their continued operation of the business without a license after being told that they could no longer operate. Concern that this business is actually a continuation of the all-star taxi business and a negative recommendation from the Sheboygan Police Department. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Under discussion. Um, is anyone, is the... Um, Gentleman stood Gentleman up. Gentleman here from the best taxi. Okay, the committee did deny the license four to one. Um, it was heavily based on the police department's negative recommendation, as well as the fact that they um, there's a lot there's many connections to the um, previous business All Star Taxi that we had recently um, had to ask to shut down, and we were concerned that it was just a continuation, and we didn't want to see that happening. Okay, under discussion, would any of you gentlemen like to make a statement? Your Honor, Neil Krakowski. Come on up to the would you please step up to the microphone? And we need your name, sir. Certainly. 
Mr. Mayor, Madam Clerk, Mr. Attorney, ladies and gentlemen of the council, my name is Neil, N-E-A-L, Krakowski, K-R-O-K-O-S-K-Y. I'm an attorney at a law firm called Weiss, Brzezowski, Brady in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I have the pleasure of appearing today to represent Mr. Moro Castro and his company, The Best Taxi, comma, LLC. If I may proceed after Please. introducing myself, thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Castro has been a resident of the Sheboygan area for over 15 years. He's driven taxi for several years. He's a small business owner like I aspire to be at one point in my life. And on July 9, 2013, the, the committee had denied or rather revoked the taxi business license that he was operating pursuant to. At this point in time, Mr. Castro, on behalf of his company, has invested just over $8,000 by my records, $6,000 to purchase the taxis, a little over $1,600 to purchase the insurance, plus several hundred dollars for the various city licenses. Mr. Castro is a real person. He's here. I have his business cards. Unfortunately, when I was meeting with him, he gave me a stack of his business cards because on July 9, as I indicated, the committee voted to revoke his license. Mr. Rios sitting in the back is one of his drivers. I know he's brought some of his customers along, and we're here today asking uh, this honorable council to reinstate the license of the Best Taxi LLC, and, and really there are two reasons why. When I had read the letters from the Assistant City Attorney, Mr. Adams, there were two things that were indicated. One was this idea that Mr. Castro's business is a continuation of All Star Taxi. And the second thing that his business continued to operate for uh, several days after originally being told that his license was revoked. And if you can indulge me for just a couple minutes, I'd like to address both of those points as a factual matter. All Star Taxi, who you may or may not be familiar with, was a business that was owned and run by a <coughs> gentleman by the name of Jose Razo, who has no direct blood relation to Mr. Castro. He has no ownership interest in this separately established limited liability company. He doesn't participate in the management of the company. And when I was little, I used to watch the show Reading Rainbow. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that show. And at the, at the close of every show, LeVar Burton, who narrated it, said, but you don't have to take my word for it. And I have a letter signed by Mr. Razo, which Mr. Castro would tell you is a letter from, from Mr. Razo that reads, as of May 25, 2013, I, Jose Razo, sold all of the equipment I owned from my prior company, All Star Taxi, LLC to Moro Castro. I have no affiliation with the management or daily functions of the Best Taxi LLC. I understand he was denied a license because he is dating my sister, but that is where our connection stops. We made a business transaction and all businesses ended with that. I assure the city and the council that I have no involvement with the Best Taxi LLC and hope that he is not judged due to my lack of being able to run All-Star ta all Taxi LLC property, properly. And he leaves his phone number in case anybody wants to call him on that point. There is no evidence that Mr. Razzo is in any way associated directly or indirectly with Mr. Castro's business. This letter seems to indicate affirmatively that he hasn't been. The other point that I want to make gets to this idea that Mr. Castro, on behalf of his business, was purposefully or unintentionally uh, running All-Star Taxi after being told that his business, that his license had been revoked. Now, from my understanding of the facts, and Mr. Castro could corroborate this, is that on July 2nd of 2013, he received a phone call from a, a, a woman by the name of Cinda, so far as I understand it, in the, in the city's office, and she indicated that his license had been revoked and he was to cease operating at that time. Mr. Castro then inquired of her if he, had, if he could have a couple days to wind down his business. And it's my understanding that that was responded to in the affirmative. So he did continue to operate between July 2nd and July 9, 2013, during that period of time, based upon his understanding, which, as it turns out, apparently was a misunderstanding. And if you ask Mr. Castro if, if he received a no to his question, he would tell you he would have ceased business immediately. The reason why I bring this up is because as a small business person, I think Mr. Castro shouldn't be penalized for, well, the actions of an individual in a company that don't have any direct management control or any day-to-day -day involvement in his business. As I told you at the outset, he's invested almost $8,000 into this business, money that he's not going to have returned to him, not voluntarily. 
He employed four drivers in the Sheboygan area. And importantly, from what Mr. Castro tells me, and I have to take his word for it, and like I said, you can ask him for yourselves if you'd like. Uh, importantly, he provides a unique niche in the taxi cab industry in Sheboygan in that his company is the only one that is specifically capable of handling transporting Spanish-speaking individuals in the community. And the last I checked, that's about 10% of the population here in Sheboygan. And I know he submitted a petition signed by 50 or so of his customers. His customers will readily tell you that he's faster than the competition, quicker than the competition, and more helpful than the competition. By reinstating his license, there's no reason that the committee or the full council could stop keeping an eye on his license. The ordinances still are what they are, and if any situations arose in the future that you thought required re revocation at that time, that's another opportunity to do it. But I don't think, in my opinion, somebody who operated for approximately seven days inadvertently through his misunderstanding should be penalized for that. And so as a small business owner, as I indicated, on behalf of Mr. Castro, his customers, his four drivers, we're here today asking for reinstatement of the license. The council could have continuing oversight of it, but at least he should be afforded an opportunity to prove to the council, to members of the community, and to others in government that he is a successful, capable, small businessman. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Alderman Vander Weel. I guess I'd like to clarify that his license was never revoked. Um, when you're given a, um, when you apply for a taxi cab business license, it's not instated until you are at, um, come before the law and licensing and we approve the license. So it was never revoked. It just had, it was not approved. Thank you for that clarification. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just have a couple questions for the gentleman. Sure. Thank you. Um, first, um, thank you very much for, for coming. A um, couple questions. Um, is this a single member LLC? It is. It is. And if you look with the paperwork filed with the state, Mr. Raza was the sole individual okay. who is the member of the LLC. And just to confirm that uh, Mr. Raza is not employed, doesn't do the book work, no way, shape, or form involved in this corporation or L excuse me, LLC at all. That's, that's correct. And if you prefer, I could have Mr. Castro respond directly, but he'll correct me, I'm certain, if I speak inappropriately. Fair enough. And then um, when did this business start? Uh, June 2021. 20, 21. Uh, June 21? Okay. Right. Okay. And then secondly, um, you know, this will be for other discussion, if I could hold them afterwards. Very good. Alderman Warren. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, I guess a question for the committee chairman. What were the uh, negative recommendations from the police department? I guess then I'd like to have Chief Demogolski come to the sure. podium. Chief, would you care to come forward? Police Department's negative recommendation is based off of the um, actions that the business owner has taken so far in which he's demonstrated that he's not capable of successfully carrying out the business. He started the business when he was told that he didn't have a license and couldn't operate. He continued to keep operating. He testified in front of the committee that he had employed drivers that were currently driving at that time that didn't have the business licenses that they required. And so that's our concern is the other business failed because they weren't following the ordinances and now we're seeing the same conduct. We would like to see a business plan showing the processes they're putting in place on how they're screening their drivers, if they're training them, how they're insuring they're licensed, whether insurance is in place, and those kinds of things that would ensure that they're successful. Thank you, Chief. Any, go ahead, Alderman. Thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Chief, then, if they got all their ducks in a row, you might say, uh, you wouldn't have any objection to them operating if they got, took care of everything that you just mentioned? Correct. Thank you. Under further discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, again, also for the committee chair, <coughs> maybe explain 
before they can start, they have to have licenses before they can start driving taxi cab? Correct. Okay, does the business owner also have to have some sort of business operator's license in addition to just a ca taxi cab license? The business license. Okay. Was, um, forgive me, was, please, was, was that, you opened a business 621, were you aware that you needed those license prior to opening the business? Or did you already have a, a taxi cab license on 621? Well, if I can just make a point of clarification, sure. for, first of all, in response to your question. Under, under the Sheboygan ordinances, and I'm, I'm going to pull out my copy here if you can bear with me. And I'm, I'm looking specifically at section 130-56. There are three types of licenses that are required. The taxi cab business license the taxi cab vehicle license, and then the taxi cab driver's license. As far as I understand, there's never been a dispute about the driver's license issue or the vehicle license. So the only one we're talking about is the business license. And what had happened when Mr. Castro applied, he, received, he actually received what was titled at a provisional license. And due to some mix-up, for, for lack of a better word, and there's no animus about that, he was operating pursuant to that license up until about July 2nd, as I said, when he was advised that, in fact, there was, there's no such thing as a provisional uh, business license. And at that point in time, his conversation with, with uh, the, the woman named Cinda was, is it okay if I have a couple more days to wrap this up because I have customers that I need to respond to? And, and at that point in time, my understanding is the answer to that question is yes. So that's the issue, and that's the specific license that Mr. Castro and his business are seeking reinstatement of. And with respect to the chief's comments, I can tell you that Mr. Castro, on behalf of his business, would be happy to work with, work with law enforcement to make sure that all of their ducks are in a row, uh, to use the chief's uh, phrase, uh, in order to successfully move forward together. Alderman Lassard. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to ask Susan Richards if she was privy to the conversation with Cinda regarding the situation and if Cinda gave the permission to this taxi company to continue operating after July 2nd. City Clerk? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, when we were aware, and we were made aware, and we realized that a provisional business license was given out when it is not available to be given out, um, Cinda did make a call to Mr. Castro and said, your license is not valid. There is no provisional license stated in the code. Um, I heard her talking to him, and she said, you may not operate because there, you don't have a license right now. And I didn't obviously hear the other side of the conversation. I was in my office. Um, I know she was repeating it, saying, you don't have a license. You don't have a license. Whatever happened, I, 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 don't, I didn't hear the other side of it. So I don't know if he asked, can I see? I don't know that I didn't hear that. So she may have, she may not have, I can't answer that. But she did tell him that, you know, the circumstances stand that there is no such thing as a provisional license. It was uh, our mistake and that he needed to cease and desist operating. Whether or not that was understood, my understanding, it was a misunderstanding, but I can't say yes or no. Any other discussion? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I guess I want to ask the uh, committee chairman what would be appropriate for this, uh, for us to send this back to the Law and Licensing Committee uh, to see that uh, the gentleman has everything set to go in business, and then if the committee wanted to take a vote on that and send it back to the council either to approve or deny, uh, and I would like to have that done as expediently as possible if you have a meeting coming up soon, and uh, whatever, whatever the recommendation is, I'd hate to have this, if, if it's affirmative that we want this gentleman to go into business, if that's what your ultimate recommendation is, we're not meeting for another three weeks after tonight. And if it is affirmative that you want him to be able to go in business, then I would ask the mayor to call a special council meeting. We've done this before in certain situations. I would hate to have this gentleman, if it's affirmative from the committee, have to wait till the first week of August to go into business. Thank you. Thank you for that discussion. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd move to refer this back to law and licensing. Um, but I would also ask um, that 
the two of you, I'm assuming, um, put together a detailed business plan about how you're going to comply with the code. Make sure that we are confident that you understand the code um, or the statutes, ordinance, whatever you want to call them, and what provisions you're going to put in place to make sure that licenses are kept up to date, they're renewed on time, so on and so forth. So I'd mo move to refer this back to law and licensing. Thank Second. you for that motion. It's been seconded. Any other further discussion on the motion? To refer, seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? I'm going to call a voice vote for this. Very good. Um, Bellinger? Aye. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Dassler? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Herman? Aye. Wassard? Nay. Lewandowski? No. Pentacle? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 12 ayes, 2 noes. Next, we'll move on to item 7.3 in RC by law and licensing regarding the nuisance activity that has occurred at the premises owned by Judith Ellinger. Having heard the testimony and reviewed the documentary evidence presented by the Chief of Police and by Judith Ellinger, the committee has found various facts. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you. Move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Under discussion. The motion is before us then with no discussion. The clerk will call the roll. Fourteen ayes. Next is item 7.4 in RC by finance recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2013 budget for Erie Avenue street improvements. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adapt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. So moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? Fourteen eyes. Item eight point one will lie over. And um, under other matters, or rather under matters laid over, nine point one or is a resolution twenty seven dash thirteen dash four dash fourteen by Alderman Lewandowski authorizing the designation of several sites as historic. Alderman Lewandowski. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Thank you for that motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. The uh, motion is before us for discussion. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Mark. Mark. 14 ayes. Other matters? City Attorney. 10.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2014 and June 30, 2015. That'll be referred to the Law and Licensing Committee. And 10.2 is a resolution rescinding 2012 real estate taxes for assessment number 59281204080, and 59281316780. That'll be referred to finance. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you for that motion and second. Please call the roll for adjournment. Fourteen eyes. We stand adjourned. Stop this.